Hi, Paul Coker here from OneBloodyDrop.com. I'm really excited. I'm sitting here in Brighton today with Rachel Hunter Dunn. Uh, Rachel was a, a friend of mine. I met her about three years ago at the Animus Sports Weekend when we were both learning the foundations of how to exercise with diabetes. And Rachel does some uh, incredible open water swims for incredible distances. And today I'll we'll be asking Rachel about how she manages her blood glucose levels. Thanks for joining us today, Rachel. No it's nice and to see you. <laughs> good to see you again. So Rachel, how long have you had type 1 diabetes? Since 1998, so fairly long time. Okay, and uh, I'm guessing that you started out using insulin injections? Yeah, I did. I was on um, taking four in. So. Four, four a day? So yeah, yeah I was taking um, four injections a day, so breakfast, lunch, dinner and then one before bed. Okay, and uh, I, I believe that you're now using a, an insulin pump. That's do you, right, yeah. Do you find that that makes it easier for you to do exercise? It's been amazing actually. I've been on um, an insulin pump for about five years, um, but then my sort of career changed and I started to um, coach swimming. So I managed to get a waterproof pump, which really has helped me um, continue in my job and also manage my diabetes whilst working. Um, so it's been amazing and it's so sort of specific in. Um, the levels that it's really easy, much easier to control than being on injections. So, one thing that's always been a challenge for me is actually keeping my insulin pump on whilst I swim. So, how do you manage that? Keeping it on. <laughs> yeah, because um, to start with, I never had a waterproof pump, which I now do have. But I always found that the cannulas came off whilst I was in the water for any length of time. So, do you have any special techniques or? So I have secrets um, to share. <laughs> <laughs> no real secrets, but I have. Um, you can get some wipes, which make it easier to stick to your skin. Uh, but I don't really have a problem as such. Um, I mean, I change my um, cannula every couple of days, um, anyway. So I haven't really had a problem with it coming off. Only if I've been in a hot country, um, you know, when you're, you know, you're sweating and your skin's. Um, not that sticky, so yeah, um, I haven't had a huge problem with that. Okay, and um, are there any special measures that you take for your diabetes before you go for a swim? So it depends sort of how long I'm going out for. Um, I do a lot of cold water swimming, uh, which uh, I, I find that that affects my blood glucose levels. Um, so it really depends if I'm doing cold water swimming or if I'm just if I'm going out on a longer distance swim. Um, so for example, I, I did a, my longest swim, which was eight kilometers. I did that in Lanzarote um, earlier this year in May. And um, so before the big swim, I sort of took on a lot of carbs the night before. Um, and the good thing about the insulin pump is that you can uh, reduce the, the basal rate of insulin going in. So I, I did a temporary basal rate, um, set that a couple of hours before swimming and set it to a couple of hours after you finished as well. So I find that really was useful. I can't even begin to imagine what swimming for eight kilometers must feel like. For, for me to go <laughs> and swim at half a mile in the swimming pool is my idea of a disaster. <laughs> so to, to swim for eight kilometers, you, you have my deepest respect. I think oh, this is incredible. You. Um, you, you were talking about cold water swimming and, and you're saying that that affects your blood glucose levels so what happens to your blood glucose levels in the cold water? So I find that my blood glucose tends to rise um, maybe half an hour to an hour after I've come out of the water um, so you have to it's a little bit tricky to manage it, like I said before it depends how long you're going in for so sometimes I don't I don't react to it but um, other times you just have to sort of bring your sugar level down a bit okay um, so do you, does that tend to happen more on longer swims than shorter swims what? <laughs> the, the blood glucose level increase does that tend to happen more after you've done a longer cold water swim so, well, <laughs> I don't actually go in for that, you know, if you're talking about, so for, in, for instance, the eight kilometers I did in Lanzarote, that yeah. wasn't a cold water swim. Um, it was a nice temperature. Okay. Although, 
you do start to feel cold but I mean in terms of swimming in sort of February where it's six degrees that's where I wouldn't be in for more than sort of 10-15 minutes okay um, but obviously the, the 8k that I did that was in warmer waters